Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and another edition of Q&A. Let's roll the questions. Hi, I'm using Books Go 10.3 for almost a year now and I'm very happy with it. Unfortunately, I don't have a surface where to put my uh, put a lamp besides my bed. Do you have any suggestions on which portable lamp to buy? Do you use one? I've tried quite a few lamps and I've actually made a review of the one that I'm currently having or using. Link is going to be, the card is going to be there. Um, let me check and see what it's called. Yeah, it's this one. It's called uh, Vecchia or something like that. Um, and it's okay. The important part is that it gives a diffuse type of a light, as you can see. So it's not, you can't see the LEDs in there. And you have warm, you have cold, and you have a mixed type of a light. And you have also the control of vo volume, of intensity, and all of that kind of stuff. It's bendable and uh, it has a clamp here. So all of that kind of works, but the problem is that with the Go 10.3, Go 10.3 has a glass surface which does have reflections. So what I think you're going to be struggling with with the Go 10.3 and this particular lamp is to find the angle at which it works. It's not impossible, but you will have to kind of fine tune it and finagle it until you find an angle. But once you do, then it actually works just fine. So uh, check out the review that I already have on this light so that you can see the examples of it and how it works. And then you can maybe try that one and see if it works for you or not. What a surprise. Now you have two black and white go-to devices, no more color. For that only, I guess you'd choose the 3C. And this is in regards to the video when I was trying to choose between the, which one do I keep, Note Air 3C or the Go 10.3 because Note Max became my primary driver. But if the color thing surprised you, wait until I tell you this one, which you probably haven't considered. Not only do I no longer have a color device, but I no longer have a front lit device either. Go figure. You're amazing, such a great job. Thank you so much. If everybody has your passion in what they do, the world would be a better place. Well, thank you very, very, very much. But my sense of humor and my brain wanted to kind of single out this comment, but because of the sentiment, which is really, really well natured, but I have to kind of say like, there have been a lot of people throughout history who have had extreme levels of passion for what they believed in. But what happens when a person has extreme levels of passion and what they believe in is maybe not so good? It doesn't necessarily mean that the world will be a better place. In fact, today we have examples of that as well, quite a few of them, unfortunately. But I do appreciate the sentiment, I genuinely, genuinely do. It's just that like my brain is wired in such a way that when I read that, my first comment was like, mm, history, history, mm, today. Mm. Thank you, Voya, for this comparison. It's fantastic. Thank you very much. Here we have books doing very booksy things. Do you know any rational reason why the black and white books 7 don't have the same screen while they are supposed to be the same? Why just don't use the same exact material and just change the colors? That's a really, really good point. And no, I have absolutely no idea why they would actually employ a completely different panel for that as well. I mean, there's one more thing that does come to mind and that's because the Books Go 7 actually uses the pen and it's a little bit insane and out there, but it actually makes more sense, which is like, could it be that they just simply wanted to see how the pen and the nib performed on one screen and then on the other? and which one the users preferred. I mean, that would be a completely crazy approach to test this because that's not normal. You don't <laughs> release products to test things, but it could be that. Follow up thoughts. I suppose creating paper output from a device whose purpose is to replace paper is outside the bounds of its workload. This is in regards to a longer discussion with Gary uh, regarding my video for printing on the things. And yes, that is a really, really good point indeed, Gary. But here's my counter argument. And that is, well, 
e-paper devices are going to be used by yeah, certain types of people, but in professional type of organization, if they are allowed by the IT department, of course, from time to time, you will need to print out uh, contracts, agreements, or maybe print out notes for a meeting or something like that. And unless everyone is on the same page, no pun intended, then uh, printing capability on the go may be something that is actually quite useful. Maybe not a demand, but certainly a useful thing to have at the tip of your fingertips. BSR should be an option to be chosen with a toggle based on what you are doing. Um, yeah, I think that I actually agree with that, that it would be a good thing to have a BSR as an option in the e-ink center for each of the refresh modes or at the very least to inform the user which refresh mode is using BSR and which one isn't. Because right now the normal and HD modes, they seem to not use BSR while the other modes are using BSR. So uh, more transparency on that and more control on that would certainly be a welcome thing. Boya, yeah, you're saying that the Books Note Max to date is the best e-paper device you've ever owned. So, you probably already have an idea of when the Books Note Max C, Aller, will be introduced and uh, what kind of characteristics will it have. How? How do you make that leap? Just because, like, I like a device, then I have to know these things? How? Where? Where are the dots to this? path that you've leaped to. What are the chances of that device becoming your best ever? The invisible magic eight ball says I don't know. Please share your thoughts on that. All right, so seriously, A, I don't have information about the Note Max C, nor do I think that it will be coming out, but never say never, but I doubt it. And B, I have no idea because I'm not entertaining the assumptions and all of that kind of stuff. So if it comes out, I'm going to test it out and we'll see. This is in regards to the EZI 2.0 RLCD monitor. I need such a monitor for coding. Will that be sufficient? And do you know of a better RLCD monitor? Well, lately, actually, I've been using the RLCD, this particular monitor, monitor the EZI 2.0, quite a lot outside because I still had like a ton of work to do and a lot of coding for DAF methodology and testing and all that kind of stuff and all of the scripting and basically like 80% of scripting and writing was done outdoors using that screen. So if you have sufficient amount of lighting, then yeah, definitely it is something that you can use for coding. Books charge over five pounds per nib in the UK. That amounts to a hidden subscription. How much do they cost to make? Possibly a fraction of a penny? Well, how the hell does that actually amount to a subscription? Subscription is supposed to offer you a service and this is actually you buying a product. So you don't have to buy those uh, because you're not locked into using only those nibs. You can use any of the standard uh, EMR nibs that you choose from. So no, I actually disagree with that wholeheartedly because it's not like a subscription service at all. If you like the work that I do and you would like to support that independence in work, you can head on over to mydeepguide.com shop where you can find high quality e-paper and template products for your e-paper devices. MDO or My Daily Organizer is a workbook to help you organize all of your personal or professional yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily needs. It is a completely interlinked workbook, making it an extremely powerful addition to any of your e-paper devices. MMP or My Deep Guide Meeting Planner is also a hyperlinked workbook focused on helping you simplify, centralize and organize all of your meeting planning needs, allowing you seamless navigation between different meetings from the meeting index page and with each meeting having the ability to have individual agenda and notes. You can also find My Deep Guide Curated Templates, which is a collection of very carefully crafted notebook templates. What makes MDG curated templates different? All of them are pixel perfect for the device screen size that you are using them on. This is why there are so many different variations so that you can choose the one that fits your device perfectly. These templates also maintain a universal eight millimeter line spacing standard and four millimeter grid spacing standard. Purchasing any of these products will enhance your productivity and simplify your organization. You also directly support independence of my deep guide. 
So those are the questions for today's Q&A video. If you do have some other sub questions or related, unrelated questions, any questions of any sort, shoot them down as comments below in this or other Q&A videos, because those are the places where I first look when collating questions for future Q&A videos. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.